you guys. Um, I was just thinking and kind of getting all melancholy, I guess, because it's kind of rainy and cold outside. But I wanted to do this video before I got too late thinking about it. But I guess I was just kind of getting melancholy today and reminiscing that it's been on February 28th of this year. It's going to be three years that I lived and started this nomadic life, you know. So cheers to that. I survived. Still doing it. Still loving it, you know. And I was just sitting here, I guess I was watching some videos on YouTube and everything, and I just, um, you know, I was seeing how other people, you know, do it and everything else. Like, we have it too easy in America, you know. Some of those people that live, um, like, out in the sticks of the UK, like, man, they have it hard, you know. Anyways, I guess I was just thinking back how, like, three years ago, you know, I remember... Like when I was a kid and as I got older and became an adult, I was like, you know, all I wanted was my own home and the white picket fence. Like really, because growing up, we never had that. Yeah, we lived in homes and my mom rented and we moved so much. We moved like every six months to every two years, two and a half years, if we got lucky enough to live there that long. But I always moved around so much. So all I had ever wanted was a home that I owned. And then, you know, I was married at one point in my life and been in other long-term relationships. So it's like, great, when we get a little bit older, we can buy a home. But where I live, it's extremely expensive, no matter how much you work, you know? And then I found myself being single again and it's kind of sad, like where I live, it takes two incomes. And I think almost anywhere you live, it takes two incomes to pretty much own a home, you know? And it's sad to be like, I love doing the work that I do. And it's like, I, it's like being an artist. You love what you do and it's what you're supposed to be doing in life. But you're like, I really cannot buy a home on this income, no matter how much you worked, you know? It's really, it's kind of sad and heartbreaking to realize what you want you'll never be able to achieve no matter what you do, you know? And I'm not the kind of person where it's like, oh, I'll just marry some rich sugar daddy and I get my home that I want. No, I'm not, I don't do that, you know? I am do everything on my own, you know? I'm just not that way. And, uh, you know, yeah, I can move to probably other areas, but, I probably couldn't be as successful with my work if I lived certain other places, you know? And even my friends that moved to other places still can't own their own home, really. So, you know, it's it was sad to be like, God, I'm never gonna feel that security of having my own home. And some time passed, you know, fast forward a little bit, then it's like, oh, the whole tiny home movement came into play. So I was like, maybe I could own my own tiny home. You know, someone will maybe let me just borrow a little bit of their land for some monthly payment or something, you know. But then looking into that, it's like, wow, so I'm going to have to probably save maybe three to five years and work hard and work a lot for that time to save up to buy one of those tiny homes, you know, because I don't have all these friends and family members that can just come and help me build that, you know. And, um, you know, it's a little bit harder in California. I love it here. You know, we have everything we possibly could want in our own backyard. The weather's awesome, and especially for the work that I do, you know, being a dog walker, pet sitter, etc. And um, so the tiny home movement thing kind of turned into the whole RV thing. Well, I can own an RV. You know, I can go on Craigslist and buy an RV and I can live in that. That can be my tiny home basically on wheels. And it kind of is better, you know, than a tiny home in some ways, in some aspects. And it's something a single person can do on the income that I get, you know, because my income fluctuates so much, you know. And it was amazing to be able to buy the bus. And I still trip about that looking back like, oh my gosh, I bought the bus. It was a bus that was converted into an RV. And to have had that and to be like, oh my gosh, I tried and saved up and, you know, I was homeless living on my car for a little while because I didn't want to keep on renting a room and not having money and savings to buy an RV. 
you know so I did live out of my car for a little while made that sacrifice and it was worth it to me and um, and uh, then you know to have gotten the bus and it was just kind of like it happened my dream my reality that I wanted really happened well now what you know and to live in the bus for about a year year and a half you know and you know, I loved it. It was great, you know, but then, you know, once my, one of my dogs had passed away, it was really hard to be in there still, you know, and I worked way more, did a lot more pet sits towards the end of owning it. And it's like, this is too much for me to take care of. I don't want to have it parked at my friend's property in the back, like all the time. Like this isn't fair to her. This isn't right. You know, I've overstepped my welcome basically, you know, I need to, I, I just wanted to downsize, you know. And I remember like, oh, I want a class B RV so bad, but those were kind of out of my price range, you know, and I didn't want to be saving again for a couple of years, you know, there's a million other things I wanted to put my money towards. So it was kind of hard to like see these vans, high top vans and camper vans and uh, the class B RVs driving around like, oh, I want one so bad. That's my next step. I want one. What am I going to do to get there? Uh, when can I get to that point? And then to one day just be like, you stop and think like, oh my God, I wanted a van and I got it. And be like, like my dream came true in a way. It sounds like such a simple dream to some people, but to me, nothing in my life has ever been simple. It has never been a simple process. It's always taking like 10 steps longer than anyone else would have been able to, to have done it, you know? And it's just like, I am always thankful for everything I have in my life, you know, and I'm not into material things at all, but it's kind of really nice to just like look back for three years of, you know, being a nomad basically and having this freedom and so much I've learned about myself through the process and you know, my, it's improved my life like so much, like more than I would have ever have realized or would have ever known, you know, it could have impacted. And um, <clears throat> it's just, it's just like amazing, an amazing journey, you know, and there's a lot of sacrifices, you know, but, you know, it's obviously worth it to me. I'm still doing it. I still live it. I still love it, you know, and I can never see myself going back to traditional housing. I call it traditional housing as apartments, houses, condos, etc. Um, I can never go back to that. You know, I will always probably be a vehicle dweller, <laughs> you know, um, even if I find some new then or girl, whoever is like, let's settle down. I'll be like, yeah, I'm still gonna be parking in your driveway. Okay, thanks. <laughs> you know, I'm never gonna lose my girl cave, basically. You know, my little pocket of my space, my world. You know, I will always have that, no matter what. You know, um, and if I find someone down the road that's like, hey, let's do this van life together, RV life together, that would be even better. You know, but for now, it's just me, and my dog. I'm good with that. But it's just amazing to look back on my journey through everything and, you know, to be like, you just stop and look and like, oh my God, what I wanted really happened, you know? And there are a couple of people that have helped me along the way in certain ways and it's just been like, like amazing, you know? And to still be living this van life and everything and... You know, you never know how something's going to be till you're there and doing it and living it, breathing it day in, day out, you know, and it's just, you know, it's just amazing how three years ago, at the end of this month, at the end of February, that it's, you know, I left normal housing and I know I'm in a house right now. I'm pet sitting again, <laughs> you know, and if I go outside to the van to do this video, those dogs would have kept barking and you wouldn't have heard me so I just figured to do it in their house um plus there's good lighting here I think and you can hear me pretty well so um <clears throat> and it's just been great too to live the van life because it's put so much more money in my pocket and I can go on so many more adventures and hopefully when the weather starts getting better I can travel more it's been a really cold wet winter it's really sucked I'm not used to this you know, and, um, but I can't wait to start doing some more traveling, especially because the van is pretty much done. Like, 
I, uh, it's coming pretty close to being pretty much done and I'm like, what am I going to do once it is done? Like, I don't know, because all the time when I do have a little extra time, you know, I start these projects in it and it's going to be like, one day it is going to be done and then I'm going to be like, well now what? You know, then my life will be settled. It'll feel like and that'll be kind of weird, I think. What am I going to do with all that extra time? Instead of worrying and thinking about the van and all its projects, you know, it's, I guess I get to go out and go live life, actually. I guess I get to be able to go travel now because I'll have money because I'm not putting it towards van projects, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I get to go on adventures, I guess, and have the time to go do it and the energy because I won't be having to do van projects, you know. I just have maybe two projects left, I think. So, um, yeah, I was just... Just wanted to kind of share that stuff with you guys and you know it doesn't matter how long it takes you to achieve your dreams you know if it's something you want and you want it bad enough you know you can still always get it no matter where you are in life what age you are you should do it because it's what you want you know and don't let anybody stop you don't let anybody tell you different than what you want. Don't have people try and talk you out of something. They don't know, you know? And that's what's kind of been awesome too about this journey and living the nomad life. And, you know, people thought I was a little crazy for wanting to move into an RV. And they always know I'm a little weird and kooky anyway. So they're like, yeah, okay, Tisha. You know, some of them are like, yeah, I could, I could see you doing that. I think that might be a good idea. And yeah, the first couple of months were freaking hard. But once I stuck with it, they realized like how much better it was. And they see now that I've gotten the van, how much happier I am, you know? And they're always like curious, like, how's it looking now? What projects have you done now? And wow, you did this? Like, how did you know to do this? You know, so it's pretty cool to like share all those, you know, thoughts and ideas and things that I've done to it with people. And they just get like shocked and amazed and like, wow, because you know, they only see me one way, one-sided, but to see this other side of me, you know, and how things are possible, you know, they're just like, like, wow, but then they're kind of like, yeah, I kind of figured you could do that, you know, so it's pretty cool. Um, what else? I think that's going to be it for this. I think I was on a good roll. I think I should stop while I'm ahead, but yeah, happy three year nomad anniversary, I guess, to me and Spike and you know, unfortunately, I wish my other two dogs were still here to be on this journey, but, you know, in those three years, both of them had passed away, and, you know, it's, that's still hard for me. <laughs> they were my babies, my kids, but, um, yeah, so keep on vanning. <laughs> Bye, guys.